Shabbat Shalom, everybody. If we could ask you to take your seats, please, as quickly as you can. Please take your seats so we can begin. Shabbat Shalom, please take your seats. Try that again. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. That's important, as you'll see later on. Welcome to our Shabbat morning service, where, among other things, we are celebrating the fact that Brody Brownstein is becoming a bar mitzvah. A couple things before we begin. If you did not get a prayer book on your way in, please do. If you guys don't have prayer books, why don't you get a few people to go grab a bunch because we're going to be using them and you're going to need them during the course of the service. Great. Shh. I'm Rabbi Joe Black. I'm the senior rabbi here at Temple Emmanuel in Denver. And with me is? I'm Cantor Liz Sachs. I'm the senior cantor here at Temple Emmanuel in Denver. A uh, few things about what we're going to be doing this morning. First of all, if you have not yet, which I have not, silenced your cell phones, now is the time to do so. Uh, we ask that there be no photography during the service. We are live streaming, so we have a wonderful video. There's, there's other videography happening and other photography. So please, we want you to be involved in the service. And it's very important that you participate in the service. This is a partnership, not a performance. Brody is leading us in prayer on this Shabbat morning, and we are here to support him. And I know for a fact, after doing this for 40 years, that the more enthusiastically the congregation participates, the more at ease our bar mitzvah is. So this is a partnership, not a performance. A um, couple sort of housekeeping things. Uh, if you need to use the facilities, the bathrooms, just go straight down the aisle there and then turn right. You'll see them on the hallway. If, for whatever reason, and we don't anticipate that there will, but if we have to exit in case of emergency, we ask that you use these two exits in the front. Uh, otherwise, at the end of the service, we'll go out that exit. But in case of an emergency, uh, that. And also, we ask that if you uh, set down a book, these are sacred, so please don't put them on the floor. Put them on the chair next to you, but we want to treat them with reverence. Um, for those of you who might not be familiar with what happens at a, a Shabbat morning service, um, we ask that you not applaud, even though we're going to be very proud of Brody, because this is not a performance. Uh, you can show your appreciation by the words, Yasher Koach. Let me hear you say that. Yasher Koach. Yasher Koach means great job. We don't applaud because it's not, it's not a, a concert or a performance. And we want you to participate actively. Um, also, um, well, Cantor, go ahead. Sure. So uh, we have so many wonderful friends and family here today. 
We are going to ask you to greet each other in two ways. Some of you are here in person. Some of you are participating virtually by, through our stream. So I'm going to ask everyone to turn around and take a look at the white center camera with the red light and wave and say Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat shalom everybody. to everyone Welcome. who's participating with here. us virtually. And then take just a moment and turn to each other in front of you, behind you, or next to you and wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. Go ahead. Shalom. Join us. I ask that you open up your prayer books now to page 173, page 173. It's hard to sort of walk into a service and dive in, especially if it's not a rubric or a tradition that you're familiar with. And so we start with our basic physical selves, where we woke up this morning. We're here. We took a deep breath. Our bodies brought us here. So we thank God for our physical selves. Join with me in the middle of the page on 173. Together. Blessed are you, Adonai our God, sovereign of the universe. With divine wisdom you have made our bodies, combining veins, arteries, and vital organs into a finely balanced network. Wondrous maker and sustainer of life, were one of them to fail, how well we are aware we would lack the strength to sustain life before you. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of our health and strength. Baruch Ata Adonai, Rofechol Basar Umafli Laasot. We're going to turn the page to 174, where now we give thanks for our spiritual selves, for the belief that each and every one of us has a small piece of the divine inside of us, making us unique and who we are. We're going to sing the first line in Hebrew, Elohai neshama shenatatabi tahorahi, O God, the soul that you have given us is pure. So we thank God for our physical selves, our bodies that brought us here this morning. We thank God for our souls. And now we thank God for our intellect, for the ability to learn, to study. And in the middle of page 178, we pray together in the Hebrew and the English. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav, V'tzivanu La'asok B'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, 
commanding us to engage with words of Torah. And now, we're going to turn to page 188, 188, where we take all this gratitude for our physical selves, for our spiritual selves, for our intellectual selves, and put it into one word, hallelujah, which we say over and over again, kol haneshama tahalelia, every breath praises God. We sing together, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's try that. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shama te hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kolan shama te hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And it is now my privilege and my pleasure to call our Bar Mitzvah, Brody Brownstein, to lead us in prayer. We turn in our prayer books to page 195. Page 195. Please rise as you are able for a Bar Chu. Yellow line, 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 yellow line, 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 yellow line, 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 my prayer. Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Yeah, the lie, lie, lie. 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 Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohenu Melcha Olam, Yotzer or Uvre Jose Ose, Shalom Uvre et Hakol, 
Hamir Laaret Vil Darim Alecha Berhamim Uftu Vo Mechadesh Bechoyon Tamid Maase Vereshit Ma Rabu Masacha Adonai Kulam Bechokma Asita Maa Haret Kinaka Tit Barach Adonai Alokenu Al Sheva Maase Yadecha Vel Vere Or Shasita Yafa Rucha Sela Or Hadash Al Sion Tair Venis ke kulanu, mecha ra la urot, ba ruch ata adonai, yatzer hamarot. Amen. We continue on page 199. We pray responsibly. God, inspiration and guide for all. You've spoken in a thousand tongues for us to hear. In every land and every age, your children have heard you and imagined you in separate ways. And yet, O oh God, you are one, you, one unifier of humanity. We, we give, give thanks for the sages and teachers who bring us understanding of your will. Gratefully, we recall the lawgivers and prophets, the psalmists and sages of Israel, and joyfully we remember that from the dawn of Israel's life, we would turn to you and find purpose. May the teachings of our ancestors live on in our minds, and their passion for righteousness stir our hearts. Help us to live so that our daily conduct reveals the beauty and wisdom of your truth. Baruch ata Adonai, habocher ba'amo Yisrael be'ahava. Amen. Page 200. Shema Yisrael, Adonai. Continue on page 201. Wait a second. Can everyone else like to sit down and take a rest? Okay. Okay. Whenever you're ready, start. Asher anochi metzabecha, ayom alevavecha, veshinatam lebanecha, vedibata pam, beshiftecha bevitecha, ublechtecha naderech, ushukbecha ukumecha, ukshatam leot aliadecha. Behayulu totafot bein einecha Uchtav tam amuzizot beitecha Uvishtarecha Le'an tizkeru va'asitem et kol mitzvotai Bihitem kedoshim l'elohechem Ani Adonai l'elohechem Asher hotzet yechem, me'eres mitraim, lihiyot lachem, lelohim, ani Adonai elohechem. Please turn to page 203. Sing the song of men and women, joined in understanding and respect, the song of God's miracles, an earth protected and cherished, a gift for our children and the generations to come. The song of the land, once ra ravaged by war, now quiet and content. 
her soldiers home to leave no more. The song of a world redeemed, the song of peace. Rock of Israel, rise in support of Israel, and redeem Judah and Israel. As you promised, our Redeemer, Adonai Tsevaot is your name. Blessed are you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ga'al Yisrael. Please rise as you are able for the tefillah, beginning on page 205. Adonai Sephatai Tiftah Ufiyagi Tehilatecha Adonai Sephatai Tiftah Ufiyagi Tehilatecha Yeshua, 
Mekadesh et Shimcha Ba'olam Keshen Shemakti Shim O Tobish Me Marum Kakachu Oya Nevi Echa Vekara Zezeve Amar Kadosh 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 Adonai Tseva Ot Mi To all generations, we will make known your greatness, and to all eternity, proclaim your holiness. Your praise, O God, shall never depart from our lips. Blessed are you, Adonai, the Holy God. Please be seated. We continue now through the conclusion of the tefillah, the central prayer, and we're going to do this in silence uh, through page 219. You may, you may pray the prayers in the book. If there's a prayer that speaks to you, pray that prayer. If there's one that is sitting in your heart that you need to pray, pray that prayer. And we'll come back together with a prayer for peace in just a moment.
תושבי תאווה ואימרו continue now with Seder Kriyata Torah, the service for the reading of the Torah. And at this time, I want to invite up some very special people to join us here on the Bima. First of all, for the honor of opening the ark, we call Cade and Ryder Brownstein and Presley Brownstein. Also joining us are grandparents Norman and Sonny Brownstein, Michael and Susan Davidoff and Lauren and Bo and Presley. I want you to come up too. And we rise as we are able He meets the on Good. So I hold in my arms a Sefer Torah, a Torah scroll, and in almost every way, this scroll is no different from those which are in this ark, in our chapel, in any ark, in any synagogue, anywhere in the world. And yet this scroll is different, not because of what's in it but because of its history. This scroll does not belong to our congregation. It belongs to a community in Czechoslovakia by the name of Kolin. And we know from our research that prior to World War II, there were approximately 446 Jewish souls in Kolin. Following the war, only a handful survived. You see, as the Nazis marched through Eastern Europe, Hitler's Einsatzgruppe and his special forces had a very specific task. And that task was when they came to a community of Jews, they would gather them together and they would either murder them on the spot or send them off to the death camps in the ghettos in Poland. And then they would go to the synagogues. And before they burned them, they stripped them of anything of value that they could find. Furnishings, gold, silver, tapestries. 
but they also took the Torah scrolls, which had no intrinsic value to the Nazis. They took them and they shipped them to a warehouse in Prague, where along with all of the other things that they stole, they were cataloged and numbered. Many were desecrated beyond repair. You see, it was the Nazis' dream that when the world was finally rid of Jews, they would create a museum to a depraved race. And the centerpiece of that museum was to have been the Torah scrolls of the Jewish communities of Czechoslovakia. Following the war, this warehouse was discovered with literally thousands upon thousands of Torah scrolls piled one atop the other. Many had been desecrated beyond repair. And so they were buried as is befitting a sacred object. But those which had a semblance of wholeness were sent to the Westminster Synagogue in London, England, where they were lovingly cataloged, repaired, and sent to congregations around the world. That's half the story I want to tell you. Because the other half refers to our finer chapel, not this beautiful sanctuary, but we have a chapel just across the way. And in that chapel are nine pieces of furniture from the community of Colleen. Now, how we got them is quite a story. You see, somehow, and we don't really know how, some people in the community understood what was about to happen in Colleen. And so they took these nine pieces of furniture and they sent them, and there was an ark, and there was a Ten Commandments and a parapet over the ark, three chairs, some a candelabrum, and other beautiful pieces of furniture. They sent them to Switzerland to be held in safekeeping in a synagogue for the war. And the idea was when the war was over, they would come and reclaim it and bring it back. But no one came. And so for over 40 years, this furniture languished in the basement of that synagogue until in the mid-1980s, the congregation there fell on some hard times. And so they put those nine pieces of furniture for sale at the exact same time that we here at Temple Emmanuel were building our chapel across the hall. Rabbi Steve Foster, our Rabbi Emeritus, happened to read an article about these nine pieces of furniture. He inquired, he went to Switzerland, saw it, bought it, brought it back here, and we built our chapel around it. So we had nine pieces of furniture, including an ark, but the ark was empty. And so we wrote to the Westminster Synagogue and we said, perchance, do you have a Torah scroll from Colleen that we can put back into that ark? And they did. This is scroll number 287 of the Czech Holocaust Memorial Torah Trust from the community of Colleen. And we took it and we brought it and we put it back in the ark, perhaps where it began its life. Now, we can't read from this scroll. It's very fragile and it's incomplete. And yet, instead of putting it in a museum case, we've returned it to its ark. And we tell its story. I've told it thousands of times by now. Every Shabbat morning when there is a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah, for this is Torah. In this scroll is our history, our values, our vision. This is Torah. For 4,000 years, our people have lived by it, and all too often, because of their loyalty to it, they have died. This is Torah. For four millennia, we have passed it from generation to generation. And on this morning of a bar mitzvah, we once again symbolically pass it from generation to generation to generation from grandparents to parents and from parents to their son. We are gifts and we are blessing. We are history in song. We are hope and we are healing. We are learning to Shema Yisrael, 
Presley to close the ark and we call Chad and Callie to come on up to help us undress our state fair Torah. Everybody, you got to do better than that. Shabbat shalom. There's a reason I'm doing that, and you'll find out. So, in just a moment, we're going to be calling our bar mitzvah up to read from the Torah. But before we do, there, I know there are some of you, especially some of Brody's classmates, who may not have been to a service before and don't know what a Torah scroll is and what it looks like. So I'm going to show you a little bit. First of all, a Torah is the most sacred object in a synagogue. In this scroll are the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, written on parchment, on animal skin, by a scribe, by hand. And it's quite beautiful. I, I don't know if you can see. It, it, before COVID, we used to invite people up, but we're still waiting just a little bit before we do that. But I'm going to hold it upside down so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, it is quite beautiful. Each uh, piece of parchment is sewn together. It's written entirely by hand by a scribe. And the interesting thing about a Torah scroll is that there can be no mistakes in a Torah. Each one is both identical and unique. Identical because the words have to be the same. If there's a word that's different, we can't read from it. It can be corrected unless it's the name of God. You're not allowed to erase the name of God. If for some reason that were to be incorrect, which it isn't, we would take that whole section out, set it aside, and eventually bury it in a cemetery, which is what we do with sacred objects. Um, but it also is unique because each scribe has their own style, their own signature, their own handwriting. Now, when we read from the Torah... We use something called a yad. This is a yad, which means hand. You can see there's a little finger on the end of it. And we use a yad to treat it with reverence because we want, we want to, this is not an ordinary book. There's also no, um, there's no punctuation marks or musical notes in a Torah scroll. It's very difficult to read. There's no chapter headings. Uh, and so uh, you need to be, to really study to be able to read from the Torah. And that's one of the many reasons that we're making such a big deal about Brody this morning as you lead us in prayer and read from the Torah. Now, um, each week we have a separate chapter of Torah that we read. As you'll, you'll see that one side is much thicker than the other because we are reaching the end of the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, this 
week marks Rosh Chodesh Elul, the uh, new month of Elul, which is the month that just precedes the new year, Rosh Hashanah. And so we are finishing up the reading of the Torah. And every synagogue everywhere in the world is reading the same Torah portion this week, whether they're here in Denver or in Israel or in India or anywhere. And it's how we, we mark time is by the weekly Torah portion. Also, when we read from the Torah, we don't just read it. Uh, we bless it first, and it's considered an honor to be called up to bless the Torah. It's called an aliyah. So we will be calling up members of the family and dear friends for the honor of an aliyah in just a moment for reading the, the Torah. And you're not allowed to publicly read the Torah for the congregation until you are the age of bar or bat mitzvah, which is 13 years old. And so this is the first of what we hope will be many times that Brody will be uh, chanting from the Torah. So, uh, Brody, I want you to come on up and tell us a little bit about this week's Torah portion, Re'e, and then we will begin the process of calling people up. The Torah portion for this Shabbat is Re'e, from the book of Deuteronomy. In this Torah portion, we review the rules for taking care of and providing for everyone in our community. I will be reading from chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. For the honor, for the honor of the first Aliyah, we're calling up a lot of people. Aunts, uncles, and cousins <clears throat> on both sides of the family. So Uncle Chad Brownstein and his sons Kate Ryder come up again, Aunt Callie, Uncle Stephen and Aunt Lauren Davidoff, and Natalie and Ashley and Haley Davidoff, Aunt Rachel and Uncle Brian Layden, and Brent and Alex Layden. Come on up. If there's anybody left in the concrete, no, we were, we were good. Shavashanimta <laughs> Every seventh year, you shall practice remission of debts. This, this shall be the nature of the remission. All creditors shall remit the due that they claim from their fellow Israelites. They shall not dun their fellow Israelites or kin, for the remission proclaimed is of the eternal. You may dun the foreigner, but you must remit whatever is due to you from your kin. Baruch Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu et horat emet, v'chaye olam nata bitilcheinu, baruch ata Adonai, noten ha-Torah. For the honor 
of the second Aliyah. We call grandparents Sonny and Norman Brownstein and Susan and Michael Davidoff. Baruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Ba'en Baruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Ba'en Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Blanu Mikol Ha'umi Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai no tain ha Torah. Amen. Amen. Efes ki lo hi hebe ha evion ki re hi avrechicha Adonai ba aretz asher Adonai el hecha no tain lecha na chala lerish ta rak im shamo a tishma bechol Adonai el hecha lishmor la asot. It's a chamit vachazot, asher anachim atzvecha haya. Ki adonai elochecha, berochecha, ka asher dibra, behavat eta goyim rabim, veata, lo ta avot, umoshata, begoyim rabim, uvecha, lo yim shalu. There shall be no needy among you, since the Eternal your God will bless you in the land that the Eternal your God is giving you as a hereditary portion. If only you heed the Eternal your God and take care to keep all this instruction that I enjoin upon you this day. For the Eternal your God will bless you, as promised. You will send loans to many nations, but require none yourself. You will dominate many nations, but they will not dominate you. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah emes, v'haye olam v'tap adonai, Baruch atah Adonai, notein ha-Torah. Amen. Go hug your grandparents. In the honor of the next Aliyah, we call parents Lauren and Bo. Come on. We'll get you in a second, Presley. You'll come up in a bit, I promise. Shinatoshe, Vashin, Natkashmita, Vera in Ka, Behikaha Evion, 
Velti ten no Vicara Lecha il Adonai Vicha ya Vicha Ket Natanti ten Lo Velo Yura Live of Kabatitka Lo Ki big lal Haravar Haze Yavrecha Adonai Elochecha Becholma Asecha Ufol Mishla ya decha Ki Loki Dalavia only care for Aret all can on a him as we ha, the more patol ach tif ta, a chat ha, le hihala on ye ha, a vion ha, be arte ha. If, however, there is a needy person among you, one of your kin in any of your settlements, any land that your paternal your God is giving you, do not harden your heart and shut your hand against your needy kin. Rather, you must open your hand to lend whatever is sufficient to meet the need. Be aware, lest you harbor the base thought. The seventh year, the year of remission is approaching, so that you are mean and give nothing to your needy kin, who will cry out to the eternal against you, and you will incur guilt. Give readily and have no regrets. When you do, so for in return. The eternal God will bless you in all your efforts and all your undertakings. For there will never cease to be needy ones in your land, which is why I command you, Open your hand to the poor and needy can in your land. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet, Olaychei Olam Nata Betocheinu, Baruch Atah Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Amen. We're going to pause just for a moment with our Torah open in front of us. Presley, come on up now. And I'm going to ask that you turn in your prayer books to page 253. Page 253. We're going to offer this Misha Berach, this this prayer for healing. As we do whenever we have our Torah scroll open and our hearts are full. We pray on behalf of members of our community who are in need of God's healing presence, members of this family. And if there are names of people in your life who are in need of God's healing presence, in between the two verses, I'm going to ask you to to say them. Say them out loud. You don't need to raise your hand or stand. Just as our eyes meet from this side of the sanctuary to this, in between the two verses, say a name so all of us might ask for God's healing blessing on their behalf. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekor HaRefuah. We praise you, Adonai, the source of healing. Mm-hmm. 
It is now my privilege and my pleasure to call upon Brody Brownstein to both bless and read from the Torah for the very first time as a bar mitzvah, as a son of the commandments. Yamun, habachur habar mitzvah, Yosef ben David ubela, L'Aliyah HaTorah Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvorach Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melcholam Asher Baruch Arbanu Michol Ha'amim Venatananu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai, no ten Torah. Amen. Ki macher lecha, hicha ha ivri, o ha ivriya, va avar ha she shanim, uva shana ha shviit, tesha henu hofshi, me ima, vechi tesha henu hofshi, me ima lo. Teshachenu reikam, hanek ta'anik lo mitzon ha, umigarnecha umigvecha, asher berachecha, adonai lochecha titan lo, hezacharta ki evin chayta, be'eret mitraim, vayiftecha adonai lochecha. Al ken anochi matzvecha, etcha davar chazeh hayom. If a fellow Hebrew man or woman is sold to you, he shall serve you six years, and in the seventh year you shall set him free. When you set him free, do not let him go empty-handed. Furnish him out of the flock, threshing floor and vine, with which the Eternal your God has blessed you. Bear in mind that you were slaves in the land of Egypt, and the Eternal your God redeemed you. Therefore, I enjoin this commandment upon you today. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melcholam Asher natan lanu torat emet v'chaye olam nata batochenu baruch ata adonai natan hatora. Amen. Simen tov and mazel tov and mazel tov and simen tov. Simen tov and mazel tov, mazel tov. Hug your family. Simen tov and mazel tov, mazel tov and simen tov. Yeh lanu. Yeh lanu. Yeh lanu. For the honor of Hagba, for lifting the Torah, wait, we call Bro Bravo <laughs> Brownstein, and for dressing the Torah, we call Stephen Davidoff and Rachel Layden. Please rise as you are able.
So in just a moment, we're going to invite Brody to read the Haftarah. And the Haftarah is a special additional piece of scripture that comes from the, usually the prophetic writings. And each Torah portion has a Haftarah, an additional piece of text that is assigned to it for each week. And there's lots of reasons that we read the Haftarah. Of course, we just want to make the service longer. That's one reason, I guess. But, but the, the, the truth is that there were times in our history when Jewish people were forbidden from publicly reading Torah for a number of reasons. And so, but they weren't permitted, prohibited from reading out of the, the Bible, the text. And so the rabbis in their wisdom found texts that either thematically or concurrently with the calendar fit that week's Torah portion. They also wanted to make sure that we didn't only know the first five books of the Bible, but were familiar with others as well. So, Bernie, tell us a little bit about this very special Haftarah and this special Shabbat, and then uh, go right ahead. Torah of Consolation, leading up to the High Holy Days. In, the, in this Haftarah, the prophet Isaiah reaffirms a covenant between God and the Jewish people, promise saying that God will restore Israel to its homeland. I will be reading from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 1 through 5. Baruch Atah Adonai Elohenu Melech Olam Asher Bachar Bin Vim Tovim Veratza Vedivrechem Hane Marim Bemet Baruch Atah Adonai Habacher Batora Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amo Bin Vie Chaimet Vatsedek Hoi kot same lehu la main, va asher en lo chasef, lehu shivru ve echolu, ulhu shivru, belo chesef, uv lo mahir, yain ve chalav, lama tisheru chesef, belo lechem, ve giachem, belo vesova, shim u, shamoa elai, Ve'ichluto ve'tit anag ba'deshen nafshechem Ha'tu oznechem u'chu elai Shim u'uthi nafshechem Ve'echrechta lachem Be'rit olam Ha'ste David ha'ne'emanim Han ed le'umim Ve'tativ na'gidun tzave le'umim Hen goi lo te da ti gra ve goi lo da yada ucha elecha yarutu lama an aronai elochecha ve lig dush Yisrael ki fe orach. Come all who are thirsty, come for water, even if you have no money. Come buy food and eat. Come buy food without money, wine and milk, without cost. Why spend money for what is not bread? Why spend wages for what does not satisfy? Listen well to me, and you shall eat what is good, and your soul shall delight in abundance. Open your ears and come to me. Hear and you shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, 
like the true love I extended to David, as once I made him a witness to the world, a prince and commander of nations. So now you shall summon people you do not know, and the people that do not know you shall come running to you, because of the eternal your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has given you glory. Baruch Atadonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Sur Ko HaOlamim, Tzedik Bichot HaDorot, HaElhane Eman, HaOmer Veose, Hamdaber Unkayem, Shekel Devarab Emet Vatzedek, HaHatorah, Ve'ahavoda, Ve'ahanvi'im, Ve'ayom HaShabbat Chazeh, Shenatata Lanu Adonai Eloheinu, Ligdishav and Mukha, Lecha Voditiv Aret, Ahakol Adonai Eloheinu, Anach Nu Modim Lach, Ume Varhim Ota, Yit Barach Shimcha, Befi Kol Hai, Tamid Le Olam Vaed, Baruch Atadonai, Baruch Baruch Shemo, Mekadesh Ashabat, Amen. Yashakach. That's great. That's right. Yashakach. <laughs> we rise now as we prepare to return the Torah to the ark. We want to call up Brent Layden, Alex Layden, and Natalie Davidoff to help us open the ark. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. My Torah portion, or parsha, is Re'e, from the book of Deuteronomy. Re'e focuses on taking care of and providing for everyone in our community. Re'e teaches us to help others and to always give to those in need. One of the main values in my parsha is to give to others unselfishly. There should be no one in need in our community and no one without a home. Re'e also commands us to open our hands to the poor and those who are unable to take care of themselves. We should help the sick and those who cannot afford medical care. Two Jewish values that are really connected to me are chesed and rachamim, which mean compassion and kindness for all. Whether you are disadvantaged or vulnerable, the Torah tells us to act with compassion and kindness. Each day I wake up, I try to utilize kindness and empathy towards others. My Torah portion really resonated with me because I was taught from an early age by my family that living a righteous life includes helping in our community in every way possible. This summer, those values were reinforced when I volunteered at the J Jewish Community Center and was blessed to both serve hot meals and talk with an older generation of people in our community. Those, pe those wonderful people were quick to embrace my efforts and showed great interest towards a young man who simply wanted to find a way to help. While serving, I was asked my name. When I proudly stated Brody Brownstein, I was asked if I was related to Nussin Brownstein. When I responded that Norman was indeed my grandfather, this gentleman lit up 
I know him, he declared. Your grandfather was going to be a dentist, but his hands were too big. <laughs> Fortunately for all of us, Papa Norman has gone to help many people, but not by performing root canals. <laughs> performing this volunteer work brought me closer to the community and reinforced my guiding values. I would like to recognize the people who helped me study, grow, and accomplish my bar mitzvah today. My Hebrew teacher, Hagit, inherited an eager but raw student. Her patience was likely tested early on when I decided to live stream the Denver Broncos game while simultaneously learning a prayer from her on Zoom. Unfortunately, I forgot to meet the play-by-play -play and quickly learned that technology can get you in some hot water. <laughs> Thank you, Hagit, for all your time and effort, and I am proud to have worked with you. Rabbi Black. Thank you for helping me understand my Torah portion, and more importantly, the significance of my bar mitzvah. I've enjoyed and appreciated getting to know you. To Kanner Sachs, thank you for coaching me and preparing me for this milestone today. To all my teachers that are here today, each and every one of you had confidence in me from day one. You all carry a very special place in my heart, and thank you for always being in my corner. To my neighborhood friends, you know who you are. Life's better with you all in it. To Sophie, Frankie, Nana, and Mama D. You are all family to me and have helped me grow up. The lessons you've taught me and the fun times together mean the, means the world to me. Sophie, you are my adrenaline partner and there's nothing we can't build together. I'm so thankful for this crew. I'm incredibly blessed to have two sets of amazing grandparents here today, Duchess and Papa. Whether it's a memorable trip to to a sporting event, Sunday dinner, or even a drive to Bill's sports collectibles, where my father is always concerned that I'm getting ripped off like generations of brown scenes before me. <laughs> you always support, protect, and love me with every ounce of your hearts, and I am forever grateful I love you. To Nan and Poppy, I have so many wonderful memories of our time together in the mountains and on trips to Texas. I always look forward to skiing, fishing, and my favorite, a trip to Paradise Bakery. You're always cheering me on, and thank you for helping me with my math homework and keeping me relaxed when I get worked up. I love you. To all my aunts, uncles, and cousins, I'm so fortunate to have you in my life, and you all mean so much to me. Uncle Chad, everything you do for me is amazing, whether it's a once-in-a-lifetime trip to see Alabama play LSU in Death Valley, or simply a walk. When you share your life lessons, I will always treasure our time together, and I love you. Aunt Callie, the word no is not in your vocabulary, and you are always there to give me unconditional love. I also appreciate the help with my dad when I get into trouble. I'm so happy to know that a new cousin is on the way. I love you. To Dr. Steven, I'm so appreciative of our time together, skiing, and I always enjoy calling you to tell you that the snow is coming. Aunt Rachel, I can always count on you to get me up any mountain or have you, or you have my favorite um, uh, Brussels, Brussels sprouts and uh, Brussels sprouts for breakfast. Thank you so much. Oh boy. To Uncle Brian, thank you for taking me up for spins around the block. And one day I look forward to getting a shout out on Hershey's Instagram page. <laughs> L2, I have the best memories of you and Aspen, as well as our cane chicken dinners in Dallas. To my cousins, Kate and Ryder, thank you for always having my back, and I'm so proud of your accomplishments on and off the athletic fields. Kate, your sports card business is going to turn into a Fortune 500 company. And Ryder, Ryder I look forward to cheering you on at wide receiver for the Denver Broncos in 2028. To my cousin, Brent, you are the big brother I've always dreamed of. From day one, you were patient and understanding. There's no one I'd rather see Gaddies with than you. I love our time together, and I will see you at Texas versus Alabama this year. To my cousin Alex, some of my, some of my best memories were with you on the 4th of July, and I still have the gift you passed down to me. To my cousin Natalie, get ready because you will be next up. I am so excited that we can share this experience together. To my cousins Ashley and Haley, I always look forward to Thanksgiving when I get to spend time with you all, and I promise one of these days I'll actually be able to tell you two apart. To my sister Presley, you are my best friend. Who else can accept my 5 a.m. energy? Whether it's playing basketball and games together or trying out a new dance to my favorite rap songs, you are always in. I'm so proud of all that, of all that you do, but especially when you dominate on the sports fields. I love you. To mom and dad, 
I know every single day you make the best effort to be the best parents possible. You've created a very loving and nurturing Jewish home for, for both Presley and myself. Mom, thank you for your 24-hour workdays. There's no one more determined than you. Whether it's school, sports, or social events, you are always leading the charge to make sure I'm in great shape. Thank you for your unconditional love, and I love you. To Dad, or as Presley says, the big guy. Each day I make sure how, how each day you make sure how I know how loved and important I am. I see and appreciate how much time and effort you put in to provide for our family and community. You've taught me many things along the way, but none greater than the importance of family and helping others. Thank you for all your time that you spend as a coach in leading my fan club. I love you. I will now conclude with a prayer of thanks. Baruch Atah Adonai. Elokeinu melech haolam. Shechechi yanu v'ki yamanu v'higiyanu. Lazman kaze. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, for giving us life, for sustaining us, and enabling us to reach a season. Amen. Amen. Feel a little better? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It is now my privilege and pleasure to wish you a Yasher Koach on behalf of this congregation and to give you gifts on behalf of this congregation. We always say that every bar mitzvah here at Temple Emmanuel is a gift. Mm -hmm. More on that in a second. And so to represent that, we give you gifts in return. I'm first going to share with the congregation your Teudat Bar Mitzvah, your Bar Mitzvah certificate that we signed with Rabbi Black and your family just a few moments before our service started. And Brody, you know this, uh, and you read this paragraph beautifully when we signed it. But I actually want to talk for one second about the blessing in the tree, the design. And in the tree, it says, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who commands us to engage with words of Torah, la'asuk, Bedivrei Torah. We actually read this blessing out loud as a community earlier today. Engage with Torah, Brody, is what it's translated as, but la'asuk means something a little bit stronger. It actually means to work at it, to challenge yourself with it. And you have surely shown us what that is today. Your Torah portion was not easy. There were lots of parts that were hard to say, hard to sing, and hard to understand. And you put in a tremendous amount of work, and by pushing yourself and creating a dedicated routine, you found meaning in Torah. And so I hope when you look at this certificate, you remember today, not only for a job extraordinarily well done, but also because the effort that you put in reaps large reward and that that is what our tradition reminds us on a daily basis. Also in this bag are financial gift toward travel to Israel. We certainly hope that you will travel there with us many, many times. We have planted a tree in your name in Israel so that you can always continue to help make our homeland green and growing. We have gifts from our brotherhood and sisterhood. Deep breath. Okay, from mezuzah and a kiddush cup so that you can always have a Jewish home. There is a certificate for a free BBYO membership to our Temple Emmanuel BBYO chapter so that you can continue to participate and lead here in our teen program. And last but not least, there is a gift from our clergy team called Text Messages, which is a Torah commentary for teens. And on the inside front cover, each of us has written you a note about what a pleasure it has been to study with you. If you can't figure out what it says because our handwriting is iffy, call me. All right, Brody, last thing that I'm going to say, just a few words about what a joy it's been to get to know you. There is a mitzvah, a concept in our tradition that one should always hurry toward a mitzvah hurry toward a commandment, hurry toward something that makes our tradition beautiful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. Now, I know many of us gave you a pretty hard time in the last week about slowing down. <laughs> Although I have to say that as a New Yorker, I appreciate the fast talking. I know that sometimes that's hard for you. Yeah. You like to talk fast. Yep. But here's what I love is that the hurrying is not just about rushing through what you want to say. 
The hurrying also represents how quickly you want to do something that is meaningful for you. How often you wanted to hurry to open the ark and use the fun contraption that makes our curtains part. How often you wanted to hurry to hold Torah, which is hard. It's heavy. No. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, Brody, what I, what I hope you realize is that that's a gift, that that emotional connection, that desire to want to be a part of things and get excited about things is something that will motivate you for the rest of your life. And there are moments where it's also good to figure out how to slow down. Mm -hmm. Look at this beautiful congregation that loves you and is here to support you mm -hmm. and take a breath and appreciate the moments of pause you can create in your life to really understand what a blessing it is to have the gifts that you have. Mm -hmm. So Brody, I can't wait to keep learning and hurrying with you for many, many years. Mazel tov. And now I'm going to invite your parents to come give you words of blessing. Brody, we are so incredibly proud of you, not only today, but every day. Your innate concern and compassion for others is remarkable, asset that will lead you to exceptional outcomes. Continue to trust your heart. Your effort is always on display, whether in the classroom, skiing, not many seven-year-olds conquer the Highlands Bowl, or in golf and basketball, where you're quickly becoming a bucket. You always leave us admiring your endeavors. Today, we have watched you perform the sacred prayers and rituals for your bar mitzvah day. Your hard work and persistence has paid off, and your big grin and brilliant smile light up a room. We stand up here today as a lifetime of fans of Team Brody. We are in awe and share the pride that everyone in this room feels. You did it. You are extraordinary in every way. We love you. Brody, you and Presley fill this family with incredible pride and joy. Not only the family with us today, but the family no longer with us that is staring down from the stars in heaven and celebrating. Going through your bar mitzvah, you learned an incredibly important, valuable lesson in your life, which is relentless pursuit and effort leads to great outcomes and success. I pray that you take that with you, that if you give that kind of effort and preparation, you will succeed. And today, you are an incredible success. I think about our family, and I think about how much helping others means to our family. It's a foundational piece. Please continue that legacy, but make it your own. I tell you often that your superpower, or one of them, is your kindness. Use that as your guiding light. When I look out to the audience this evening or this morning and I see all the friends and family, it reminds me of how truly blessed we are. It seems like just yesterday that we took you home in our arms and now we see you up here today emerging as a dynamic young man. We love you. We're so proud of you. Congratulations. It's just a few more words, Brody, before we invite your parents and Cantor and I to bless you. So, Brody, this has been a wonderful experience getting to know you, getting to learn with you, to learn from you, to teach you, to answer your questions, to ask you questions. And I want to say a couple words about your Parsha Re'eh. 
it's a remarkable Torah portion because it starts by saying God sets before us a blessing and a curse. And I talked about this last night, but there's, there's one part of Re'e that I find fascinating each time I read it, and it was the part that you read. It begins by saying, there shall be no poor, needy people among you. There shall be none. Zero. And then a few lines down it says, but if there are, you got to take care of them. And then a few lines below that it says, there will always be poor people and needy people among you. So the Torah is saying three different things. There will never be anybody. But if there are, take care of them. And there always will. And I think this is in there to show us an important concept. That as Jews, as people of faith, we have an ideal for the way we want the world to be. We want there to be a world where everyone is taken care of. But we know that's not the case. And that there are always going to be those who are in need. And so it's our responsibility, as you taught us so powerfully and so beautifully, to take care of them, to look out, to use the resources that we have. Now, you and your family have been blessed, and you have, as you said, so powerfully done a lot to make our community a better place. And for that, we're very grateful. And now that responsibility very soon will be on your shoulders. So I want you to keep that ideal in your head, the way the world should be. But we know the world isn't always as it should be. Sometimes... Sad things happen. Sometimes people are mean, even to you, even to me. But if we only focus on how people hurt us, then all we, can be do, all we do is, is feel that hurt. But if we keep our eyes on the prize of the way that we think the world should be, no one can hurt us because we have a vision for a perfect world. Brody, I look at you, and I know that you're someone who cares deeply. You're someone who wants to make a difference, and you will make a difference in the world as long as you keep your eyes on that ideal, not the fact that there always will be people who are mean, always will be people who are suffering, but what the world should be like. You can make a difference. I look at you. I feel really good about the future because you're someone who knows what it takes to make the world a better place, so thank you. Thank you for teaching us Torah. Thank you for leading us in prayer. Thank you for showing us something holy, something wondrous through the way you led us in prayer, through the way we could feel it coming from deep inside your soul. So I want to invite you and your mom and your dad and Cantor to join me on the bima. Please let us rise. We're going to go up to the ark and we're going to ask God's blessing upon you. Brody, on behalf of your mom, your dad, your sister, your grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, on behalf of your clergy, your congregation, your community, and the Jewish people, we welcome you as a bar mitzvah, as a son of the commandments. We welcome your sensitivity. We welcome your strength. We welcome the way that you look at the world and yeah, you feel the pain in the world, but you also see the potential for beauty. We welcome the way that you teach us to look for the best in everyone, including ourselves. And we ask God's blessing upon you now, Brody, in words of Torah, from which you chanted and taught us so beautifully just a moment ago. <laughs> Son, may God bless you, Brody, and may God watch over you. May God's presence always be lifted up to you, and may you see the face of God in every person you meet. Shalom, 
Shalom. May God's presence fill your heart and your soul and your home. And may you know and may you teach and may you live shalom, wholeness, fulfillment, and peace. And let us all say Amen. Amen. And we ask that you remain standing and turn to page 282 for Aleinu. Page 282, second paragraph. Take down. Aleinu le shabeach la don hakol la tekedu la leotze breishit shelo asanu kegoye haratzot velo samanu כמשפחות האדמה שלא שם חלקנו כהם וגורלנו ככל המונם ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך Please be seated. Turn, if you will, to page 293. <clears throat> Our thoughts now turn to those who have departed this earth, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and our neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. And as we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss of life and death. Bo, as you said, there are people who are no longer here, but whose presence fills our hearts and fills this space. And we mention by name members of this family who have been taken from the family circle, Tilly Brownstein, Bobby and Toby Tobias, Robbie Tobias, Rose and Dave Davidoff, Sylvia and Norman Cohen, Helen and Bob Rawdon, Adeline and Joe Spiritus, and Ryan Spiritus. I ask if there are other names of people for whom Kaddish is being said on this Shabbat. Zuchanam levracha, may their memories be for a blessing. I ask at this time if anyone has lost a loved one in the past 30 days to please rise as you are able at this time. If there is anyone who is still in the 11 month period of mourning since the loss of a loved one, please rise as you are able. And if there is anyone observing a yard site, the anniversary of a death on the Shabbat, please rise. And now in solidarity, let us all rise as we stand with those who stood before us in love and in spirit and on behalf of those for whom there is no one to say Kaddish as we turn in our prayer books to page 294, page 294, as we join together in ancient words that link generation to generation. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'yalma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chaye chon uv'yome chon uv'chaye dechol beit Yisrael Ba'agala uvizman kari vimru amen. Yehe shme rabba mevarach la alamu lalme almaya. Yit barach viyishtabach viyit paar viyit romam viyit nase. Viyit hadar viyit ale viyit halal shme de kudsha brichu. 
לאלה מן כל ברכתה ושירתה, תושבחתה ונחמתה, דאמירן בי עלמא ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. May the source of peace who makes peace in places far beyond our knowing send peace and comfort to the bereaved here among us, wherever they may be. And let us say, Yaseh Shalom, Yaseh Shalom, Shalom Aleyh, Ve'alko Yisrael. Brody, come on up one last time. We're going to ask you to lead us in the blessing over the wine and then the blessing over the challah. So after our service, when everyone leaves to go to your party, we don't have to wait. So hold this up. We sing Ready? together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech olam Borei peri hagafen Amen. Take a sip. You can have as much as you want. It's grape juice, I hope. Or, or as little as you want, also, okay. It's That's grape fine. juice. <laughs> All right. And then we're going to ask you to lead us in the motzi. Blessing over bread. This is going to take a little longer because I have to unwrap it from its plastic wrap. Is this a full? Oh, good. Okay. Direct from Zadie's. That's good. Can you get that? Pick that up. Thanks, Brody. All right. Cover it. And now uncover it. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, Amotzi lechem min haaretz b'teavon. Go bring that down to your family, and then come join us in the front of the bima. We will conclude our service this morning with words of joy, with words of song on the bottom of 339 as we wish a mazel tov to this amazing bar mitzvah and this beautiful family. We say, have a nashira, shir hallelujah, let us sing songs of joy. Have a, have a nashira, shir hallelujah. Shir hallelujah, Hava, Hava nashira, Shir hallelujah, Shir hallelujah, Hava, Hava nashira, Shir hallelujah, Shir hallelujah, Hava, Hava nashira, Shir hallelujah. Eloheinu velohei kol doroteinu, our God, and the God of every generation, generations past, who's yet to be. We've come together on the Shabbat to celebrate, to give thanks for moments of awareness of your presence, moments where we are acutely aware of both our ability and responsibility to make the world a better place. God, we thank you for this family. We thank you for this day, for this opportunity to truly find your presence in our souls. And we ask your blessing. Blessed were we in coming here. Blessed may we be as we go forth for this time and always. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. And Mazel Tov! Hava, Hava, Nashira, Shira, Alleluia. Hava, Hava, Nashira, Shira, Alleluia. Hava, Hava, Nashira, Shira, Alleluia. Shira, Shir hallelujah, shir hallelujah.
Mazel tov. Mazel tov.